just turned out to be so perfect. Um, okay, so today I will be doing a react to Bill Murr um, real time show. I do agree with him probably 75% of the time on the things that he says, and this just happens to be one of them, so let's get into it. Okay. All right, here we are in overtime. Uh, Kellyanne, if Trump runs again, will you help with the campaign? <laughs> Well, let's see what he decides. I want to help get rid of Biden and Harris because I agree with the vast majority of Americans. They're doing a terrible job on the issues that affect us most. Yes. Which Americans, <laughs> Americans say is inflation. What is the price of gas? I haven't, I haven't heard here lately. Here in California, six dollars. It's, it's um, six dollars. So I'm going wow. I'm absolutely going to. I'm absolutely going to support the Republican nominee. All right. I'm so glad I have a Tesla. I don't have to buy gas. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, Cork now, with the advent of social media, political protests have certainly changed since the last century. Is this for the better or for worse? Depends on the quality of the character of the people who participate. Technology is just a mean what you bring to it. What you bring to it, you know? But certainly, I mean, you would uh, admit that it allows more people to hear about something going on. I mean, you, I mean, the, you could have the version of a flash mob. That's you true. know, I mean, That's you can get people in an hour to show up someplace. That's true. But in the end, it's about quality rather than quantity. I agree with him on that one in so many ways. Um, people are so concerned more about um, how many times something happens or how many times this is around or that around when they're not thinking about the quality of sh stuff. And I could go on and veer off into another topic, but we are just sticking to what he has to say when it comes to social media, the presence, the people wanting to convey their messages out there. I don't care who you are. No, no one should be shut down, um, you know, about how they want to, how they, when they're, when it comes to expressing their feelings on uh, certain topics in society, no one should be shut down for that. However, if you're trying to move people in a certain way, um, in order to affect legislation, I do think, in my opinion, quality oh, and substance of what they're trying to change um, and just looking at the situation from a bigger pers you know, standpoint than something that's so focused, I need to see every variable that is contributing um, to a movement and why or I should say, contributing to an, an event that's causing a movement to arise in protest of such events. I need to know what's all being factored into that before I even say if this is something worthy to even, you know, be concerned about. It's not how many times people are doing it or saying, uh, or, you know, it's not how many times or how how many times or how many people are pushing a certain movement onto society? It's more about the quality, the quality, the message. So I agree with him on that one. Right. And it's also, I mean, a lot of people think they do something when they just post something exactly. on Instagram. Exactly. Like they got a mass movement, all these likes here and likes there. Right. No, it's just no, a you, momentary Right. <laughs> you're saying you got to actually get in the street. You got to get decent, courageous, visionary people who believe in something bigger than their own ego. And you know what? And it's hard. It's hard. There's times where I've done things here um, that made me very wary or whether or not I would lose my job. Um, people wouldn't be so receptive to me because my message is strong. Doesn't mean that you cannot come up to me and, and talk to me and ask me questions. It's just that when I see a certain thing happening in society that, you know, most people are afraid to talk about or say, or just at least stand up against it. Um, I do think people are less likely to do that if they know there's going to be pain and suffering. I mean, most there's so many studies out there that people would rather take the high road than to endure pain. And, you know, I, I agree with him on this too. So who do you... Yeah. Well, well it's going to people who believe in something bigger than their own ego. So who do you... Yeah. Yeah. Well, boy, are you in the wrong town for that. 
<laughs> but I tell you, uh, your indictment of Hollywood was powerful. Oh, thank you. Powerful, yes. though, <laughs> brother. <laughs> <laughs> you love, think of the, just think of, think of the culture. You. That there's roughly... Canada and California have roughly the same populations. More Californians kill each other with knives than Canadians kill each other with anything. Right. Well, so that's a culture. It's not fair to compare it to culture. Canadians. They're very polite. Well, I mean, but Bill Murray, you just missed it. it. Why? Why are they polite? Because it's in their nature, it's in their culture to be more polite. It's, it's something about Canadians that we've always known in comparison to America. It's culture. It's very cultural. It's something that's very um, specific to the Canadian culture. Yeah. The Canadians got their problems. It's They've unfair. got their problems. Yes, they but no, do. But our, but, yeah. our dominant myth is the frontier. The more yes, you right. Through violence. No, I mean it's, the guns. I mean yes. Proliferating I'm, domestic violence, violence I'm against sure. gay brothers, lesbian sisters, trans, violence against black people, violence against women. I mean that's and, one of the three things we have to come to terms. And I'm sure Hoffman's got to talk about this. It's a great essay. Right? Yeah. Before he died. Yeah. Violence in America, but Slotkin's great trilogy. Gunfighter nation, it's a cultural thing. That's why we had to have counterfactual, I mean, counter hegemonic and countervailing forces against that kind of violence. So, I, I, and you know, thank you for your compliment, but I'm sure the usual suspects will see that tonight and just tear it apart. Mm -hmm. But it is what can they say? What can they say? What can they say? What can they say every week? I'm right every week. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. You're right to call it hypocrisy, I mean. yeah. You're right to call it hypocrisy, and that is hypocrisy. It you can't, you can't it, have these images I mean, in front of these kids and right. pretend it doesn't and, matter. And, and what's but, interesting is that we used to talk about that, and then we just stopped. But how talk. is this different from the what, watch what you say stuff that you object to on other issues? What do you mean, watch what I say? No, I mean, well, people like telling comedians, like, don't tell these jokes about trans people, that's harm. <sighs> oh, my God. His job is comedian. What do comedians do? Did most comedians I know don't discriminate. Comedians have a purpose in our society. A lot of times it's to make us aware of the things that is hypocrisy around us and to laugh at it. If you're going to be offended by what a comedian does, then maybe you need to redefine what comedian means. And you don't want to go ahead and do that because once you start redefining what comedian means, people are going to get upset and they're going to see what you're doing. Comedians have always expressed how they felt about certain issues, whether it be political or societal. Harmful, it can encourage violence, that sort of thing. I mean, it's, this, it's the same sort of feedback effect argument. I thought, whatever happened to... Six and stills may break my bones, but words may never hurt me. Or words will never hurt me. Words don't hurt you unless you let them hurt you. I know people, I know it's a lot easier said than done, but that is the truth. Someone actually physically hit you, you're, it's gonna hurt. Doesn't it? I mean, that, you know, if entertainment matters, it changes how people say it. You're, you're right to call it hypocrisy, I mean. Yeah. You're right to call it hypocrisy, and that is hypocrisy. You can't, you can't have these images I mean, in front of these kids and right. pretend it doesn't and, matter. And, and what's but, interesting is that we used to talk about that, and I then know. we just stopped. But how talk. is this different from the what, watch what you say stuff that you object to on other issues? What do you mean, watch what I say? No, I mean, well, people like telling comedians, like, don't tell these jokes about trans people, that's harmful, it can encourage violence, that sort of thing. I mean, it's, this, it's the same sort of feedback effect argument, isn't it? I mean, that, you know, if uh, entertainment uh, matters, it changes how people behave. Right. And so either that's something that's important in deciding what entertain, well, entertainment makes you, if or you're, isn't. If you're, if you're saying, a, a, if you're talking about trans in a way that's hateful, yes, that should be called out. But if you're just talking about it as a subject, well, but I, I mean, that's, that's sort of a, that, then you get into definitional questions. The people who are objecting find well, whatever they're objecting the to. The problem to is be... that the left has moved the goalpost to if you just bring it up, you're a bigot. And that's not, no, I can't get down with that. But so, and also, we're, we're talking about.
He's saying that trying to defend you're that. About, I mean, you talk about an industry that does tons of polls and focus groups to figure out what sells. And apparently what sells is having all this gun violence. And we know who the customers are. And you're absolutely right. Look, you quantified it tonight. If people want to disagree with you, they're going to say, now you sound like a conservative. Why would you dare talk about mental health? Well, there's a reason we talk about mental health. Generation Z tells pollsters yeah. that they are suffering from emotional connections, mental health, lost learning. In fact, the America Rescue Plan, which passed a couple months ago, there's $112 billion in there for post-COVID school funding, and it's really meant to be for lost learning, new counselors, mental health. About 93% of it is still unspent. We can even shift it over to harden right. the schools, it's, keep them safer, do the mental health stuff. But let's stop pretending it's always about one thing. And let's it's not pretending. saying we shouldn't make the uh, no, change the gun laws stop also. Stop pretending this doesn't but matter. But that's mm. part of it. And uh, as long as you have this out there, I, where everything, every movie these kids see is about somebody picking and up video a, game. You didn't even and video, video right? And video, video games. games are I mean, it's a big part of the puzzle. I think the hard in the school stuff is bad. I think you know, it's when you treat schools like a fortress and when you put kids through these shooter drills that are traumatizing. It's like sending this message. I don't know. That I you should be afraid children. wherever you go. Right. I, you know what? I don't want the schools to feel like fortresses, but I'll be damned. We we have armed guards protecting our money at banks. We should be protecting our children better in the schools. There's, there's a, yeah. Okay. Okay. There's like a like I said. When it comes to society, you have individuals. This is something I've just not only observed, but witnessed. And it just continues to surface no matter where you go. You need to acknowledge both the good and the bad in society, especially that uh, in a country where we have so many freedoms. We do have bad people here. We, for instance, we think that we would, if we think that here in America, we would never do anything bad. Americans don't do anything bad compared to some of all these other countries. No, it's all the corporations. It's all the politicians' fault. Y'all never, ever, ever actually put any of the blame on the citizens who make and you know make the decision to do any of these crimes no one ever puts the blame on them they put the blame on the policies that politicians would pass and that's or, or at least allowing to uh, let like certain policies that are letting certain crimes al being allowed to happen like no one ever blames the individuals actually perpetrating the crimes. When we look at California, all those individuals that ran in and taking stuff that's because they can, that's value, as long as the value is less than $900, those individuals will go ahead and do it. We've, it's not like no one said this wasn't gonna happen. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that why is this happening in, in, in what to call it, in California. You thought people would only do it when they need it? No, there are some people who actually do it just to do it because they can, because you've given, you've given them the authority to. And when we do that, we have a group of individuals who, you know, when seeing a law that can be basically manipulated to the point where it just wreaks havoc on a society, when you have individuals who would gladly do that, but yet you have a whole other set of individuals in society who are law abiding, what is that saying to the individuals who are law abiding? Maybe I should start taking the law into my own hands because these individuals over here don't know moderation. They don't understand that everyone has to live in this society. And I, I keep like, this is the reason why I don't like a lot of liberals who are dumb on just dumbfounded about this. Y'all keep saying what that we need to live in a society where everyone matters. How will everyone matters when certain people are going to these stores stealing with, without any consequences, not even thinking about the next person who might need, uh, need those um, I guess goods that they're just stealing for, from that they're just stealing, not paying, not not paying for, so that the money can be recycled into our society, so that we can produce more of these products for other people. This is money that will never ever be recouped. We don't know. Well, I know they say. Well, honestly, thinking about it, do stores get um, insurance for thievery? Like, how how does this even go? Like for their their products that are theft. I know when it comes to reporting their balance sheets and all that other stuff, they're going to have to count that as a loss. So 
how, how I, there's just so many things that are just that can just spiral out of control about this if a company starts to lose money how are they going to be able to keep people on their payroll and then on top of that paying taxes into all this hopefully their insurance can pay so, um, for some of these products that are being stolen off of their um you know their um their shelves but then is that money going to cover is that money going to be enough to cover to keep the staff that they have already on payroll do people even think about that stuff? It's like, ah, but yet they want to tell us that if we live in a society where in which everyone just work together and everything is free and everything is this, and it will be so much nicer. No, it won't. California has literally proven this to us already. And you know, when you have individuals who will really, like when you just look at the drive-bys, you have individuals who would willingly take the law into their own hands, even when they're convicts and they can't even by law own a gun, they go out and get a gun and still shoot up people. But yet you would rather sit around and just look at the law abiding citizens and say, it's your fault. So we had to limit your ability to get guns. And therefore, when you do something like that, more crime is going to happen. Look at all the cities in America where crime like they have the strictest gun laws, more crime tends to happen there. What do you, why is that? There's a hundred thousand public schools in the United States. Like the idea that you're going to send armed guards to every public yeah, school in the United yeah. States. Oh, I mean, so, true. someone yeah. was saying send the national, you, you would like, if you put, if you put the national guards, like 400,000 people, you'd use a quarter of the national response. guard. If you I don't wanted. think we need but, a federal response. No, but I'm saying that's, that's yeah. a huge amount yeah, of personnel. I want to get back to Brother Josh's crucial point about the arts, because any time a civilization or an empire is reaching its nadir, the artists play a very important role for truth telling. Because they're in many ways the vanguard of species in that sense. And when Brother Bill says, well, the comedians ought to have not just the right, but they ought to be able to allow for the incongruity, the contradictions, the, the, the falling shorts of anybody, no mm -hmm. matter who they are, what color, sexual orientation. I think that has to be defended. But there's a radical difference, and you all tell me what you think about <laughs> George Garland's and the Richard Pryor's and the Moms Maisley. They laughed with people. Mm -hmm. Too many of the comedians these days laugh at people. Who are you talking about? <laughs> You're in the legacy of George Garland. You're in the legacy of the Greek comics. Okay, well, who are you? Who, because who, you are willing to laugh at yes, yourself yes. as you then laugh yes, at others. Who, We've got uh, some. But you're, but you're not mentioning, you're not saying the names of the people he was saying do the opposite. Well, I want to know who's I, a, who's I forget them rather mind. quickly when I when I see them because they're just. They, you're not they're talking about, talking about Dave Chappelle. Many of them aren't even funny. No, no, Dave okay, Chappelle's so a great not artist. Dave Chappelle, Ricky Gervais, Richard. I don't know that one that well. I don't keep track of all of them. But but David Chappelle is the great one. The great one. But the thing is, is that. It's the precious humanity of the, the gays and right. lesbians and trans and black folk and women and white men and, 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 and you know, Chicanos and so forth. Because we're all into this human project together. Right. And if we can't laugh at each other, mm -hmm. then we miss something very deeply. But when mm -hmm. we just, all we can do is laugh at each other, yeah. that's Hobbes on comedy, right? Sutton Grolery, laughing at somebody's misfortune, elevating yourself over somebody else. That's not that funny. Mm -hmm. No, put yourself yeah. as the object of this, and that's what you all do at your best. We just talking at your best now, but. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why I love a lot of the comedians that I do love. They're willing to not only laugh at others; they're laugh. They're willing to laugh um, with others, laugh with our own selves. Like, hey, like most of the comedies that I used to watch growing up, oh, they all talked about you know, my community and holy shit, yo, they were laughing with us. Cause we knew a lot of times the stuff that they were saying was 100% true. Yeah. No, it, I mean, we're, we're not, no one's advocating punching down, but, but, but I've seen some comics. They just come and look yeah. on the front row and start talking about how people look in their clothes. And I said, where are you going? Where, where, where are you at that? Where are you at that? Where are you at that? <laughs> at the fucking Laugh Factory on a Tuesday night? I mean, yeah. well, you know, they're talking about the open, that's that. the open micers. I mean, you know, yes. Yeah, so maybe, 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 maybe it's the open mic. Yeah, maybe okay. it's the open mic right, crowd. Right. Right. Yeah. I can take you to, let me take you to some better oh, God, I'm just going to help you. All right. All right. So, let me, let me ask a, a final question. Uh, 
Trump is going to be running again, I'm he sure. Kellyanne will be the campaign manager because, <laughs> because he's, he's going to say you stuck well, up Well, I'm for one for one because I had nothing to do with his $1.4 right. billion dollar 2020 boondoggle. Right, yes. okay, right, okay, you're one for one. Uh, and you wouldn't throw him under the bus tonight, so you know you. No, no. What I, I don't okay. Hold on. Let me just ask. You the shouldn't have people on here to add, and, and and make this human dignity question. Will you throw him under the bus or not? You. We were talking about January sixth, and I wanted to gently remind everybody: it's no. not a courtroom, it's a hearing, and that they didn't even have the guts. I think I said balls to subpoena him, but, and they never do. But I mean, you say well, here you'll support the Republican nominee, yeah, but like they, we don't have a Republican nominee yet. Why, why don't you want it to right be now. somebody? Kamala why don't you want them to nominate somebody else? Job. We don't even know what she does. Her what? weekend schedule always says the vice president has no, no. nothing on her public schedule okay. this weekend. But I want to get a vice president who's working for the, for the country. Why shouldn't they nominate Ron DeSantis or Glenn Youngkin or some other governor who's popular should, in the state on, who should. doesn't have the baggage that Donald Trump has and who 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 was who didn't? DeSantis they just made no. DeSantis needs to stay exactly where he is because he's doing really good at a local level. People like that, they don't want DeSantis at the local level. They would probably rather replace him with someone who's inadequate. Because we all know it's at the local level where a lot of this shit can really um, change as far as um, having a shield from what comes from the top down, at least in my opinion. So they should, the Republican Party should nominate who it wants to nominate. But I will tell you, in the primaries, you're, you're they're all running, they're what, all you running. You get an opinion too. And I'll vote for whom I want. I absolutely will. And I'll keep that private. But listen, because that's my right. But listen, right. here's the yeah. thing. They're all running as America first. They're all running on energy independence, uh, better tax cuts. I guess. Out of it. They're, no, they're all running on that right now. It's driving you know, me am, up the I wall, am curious. I would like to know, since you're, since you're telling the Republicans they should nominate Josh respectfully, I would like to know how this party that had 25 Democrats running for president last time, you had an openly a gay man, a very impressive person. You had an African-American man. You had a black woman in Kamala Harris. You had an American Samoa, that's Tulsi Gabbard, not Elizabeth Warren. You had a, a female <laughs> socialist. You had a male socialist. And you ended up with the old white guy from Washington. How did that happen? How mm. is the Democratic Party, this party, uh, I'll energy tell you in the how. Tell black, me. black voters in South Carolina picked the guy Pick who him. could win. Yeah. That's what happened. That's what happened. And he's a terrible president. Well, but, it was, what, but, the, but the sad thing was, it's for not, the it's first not a time, terrible president. For the first time in American history, wow. the most progressive voting bloc of black people did not vote for the most progressive candidate who was Brother Bernie Sanders. Right. That's very important to keep in mind. Right. Because Bernie was much more tied to the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. than Brother Joe Biden was. Oh, for mm -hmm. sure. But the black leadership with Clyburn and others tied to the pharmaceutical company so he can't go for Medicare for all. No, he's tied to big money like most of these milk toast politicians. <laughs> they tied to big money. So you got Bernie out there. He's right. It doesn't matter what. So like, and this is the reason why I would be independent and probably to the day I die. I'm not a dumbass. I know it doesn't matter what side of the aisle they're on. You will have politicians who are in the pockets, whether it be corporations, mobsters, God knows what. Okay. I'm not going to put my blind, like, I'm not going to have some blind trust and faith in someone just because they are of a party. It makes no sense. Where's my sort of I guess you would call it independence of thought, if I don't think about who I want to be in charge of my potential future. Like, are you kidding me? No matter how you look at it, they will inevitably be and and inevitably have some inevitable, oh my God, they will inevitably have some say so on the trajectory of how your life turns out. So why would you make your life harder by voting in people who don't give a damn about you? So you have to pick the lesser of the two evils. So we have a very long time to realize that. But in the end, you have to vote. Um, you just have to do your research. And by God, whoever voted for this man, you obviously didn't do your research. Because that man, his history, mm, it's very dark. Laying out his vision and we were winning in November, you remember? What do you mean that's the, the first time? You had in 2016, you had the b black voters lining up strongly behind Hillary Clinton over Bernie. And yeah. in 2008, you had them behind Obama, who was not as far left as John Edwards. Right. I think that uh, I, I think it's a, a long tradition of pragmatism. And now they're going for yes. Or we can say pragmatism. pragmatism. Or 
Well, in survey it. perception. <laughs> I get it. Do you call that pragmatism? <laughs> pragmatism of going nowhere in life? Okay. The difference oh, was, was oh, that black it, 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 this last election, though, brother, when we were winning in, those, in, in Nevada, in that sense, we could have had a major push for black voters for Bernie. Whereas the first time he ran, it was an interesting kind of project. They didn't think that he really had a chance. And I mean, I support maybe, Obama in 2008. Maybe he had four percent, and the black folk were not voting well, for him. Uh, but maybe early on, they maybe, shifted maybe, later. You, you yeah. maybe people just are not that in love with socialism. No, it's and not that, socialism. Well, Bernie, Bernie is a socialist. He's a New Deal, new liberal. He's a, he likes to call himself a socialist. He calls he himself a socialist. A lot of people like to he's call themselves that. things. He but why would you a socialist want, project? Why would you want to call yourself that? Why would you want to call yourself a term? That doesn't have a positive. Because he's in love with Eugene Debs, and he's in love with yes. Norman Thomas. And you, okay, who mean but the, the world people don't know who Eugene Debs is. That, well, and the, and, he, and, and if they did, he wouldn't Debs be popular. Was a great man, he got to teach I people. I think he who owns they are. his uh, socialist okay. views, though. I think he's very proud of that, frankly. And he just right. primaried a, a guy, a Democratic right. congressman in Oregon, who was backed by Biden, and the and the, also, social, the more socialist candidate won. We have polling on this. I mean, the white liberal is to the left of the average Democratic black voter. Yeah, no question. Very. Right? At every time. On yep. social issues and on economic and issues. education. Right. Yes. Most black voters are moderate, mm -hmm. not liberal. More well, white I mean, you take, Democrats take, take are the poor people's campaign with, 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 with William so, Barber and Thea Harris. We're going to be there next you're week just, with him. The black community is very supportive of William Barber and company with yes. poor people's campaign. Okay. Just as or even more than the white brothers. Well, why is Joe circles? Biden losing their support right now, though, according to lots of polls and articles? Gas. Inflation. Fucking gas. Inflation. Inflation. Right. I gotta go. <laughs> no matter how you look at it, that, that party will never understand. People care about surviving. They like money and their pockets to handle bad times or just to handle when things get stressful and they need that extra money, right? That's what people care about. When you when shit hits the fan and there's no government, people are going to want to survive. They're not going to care about your feelings. They're not going to care about how sensitive you are when it comes to them surviving. So yeah, a lot of these individuals who are Democrats, they need to, they need to wake up. These politicians who are Democrats, they need to wake up. Times are tough. And that whole saying, when white people, you know, catch a cold, black people catch the flu, this now should be changed to classes. When rich people or middle class people doesn't, and that's comprised of all races now, when middle class people start complaining or they get a cold, what do you think the poor class has? How do you think they feel? You think they are just thriving? No, they are hurting. And the fact that you can't even see that, they're hurting because you're trying to push more social bullshit, social equity instead of actual equity, instead of actual money. And I'm not talking about free money. I'm talking about the ability to have opportunities so you can go get that money. When you are taking that away from individuals, I think it does influence their decisions when it comes to voting for you the next time. The next time. I wouldn't vote for someone who's concerned about emotions than me feeding, being able to feed myself or my kids. I'm not going to give a damn about someone who's more concerned about another country's border when we can't even control our own border. When we're having people who are coming in and just putting a more strain on our system, which is taking more of our tax dollars, which means we have less coming to us, back to the people, back to the people who are even paying into the pool of tax dollars that are going to other individuals. I'm sorry, people always, no matter how, I don't know, how, how people, you know, just miss it, just dismiss it. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, when shit gets, when times get tough, 
when shit gets rough, we've seen this with COVID, people start to break away from society and they go back to a single unit, whether that be family, you know, their neighbors, they start to break down so that they can survive with whatever they have. They, it's just, it's just, just, it's just human nature. Hopefully people catch on to this, but you know, trying to convey my thoughts to the point where I'm not, you know, I guess um, being politically incorrect can sometimes be difficult for me because I'm still worrying about people's emotions or caring about people um, that I don't say the wrong thing. But I think that I should go with their approach of if the shoe fits where it, if it don't kicks it off for the in the future. But anyways, thanks. Fucking death. <laughs> Till next time.